Oh, look at that damage. It's all connected. Somebody walking through here when they're fishing, trip and fall. This is a good run right here. Here's another one here. You can see how long that run comes in through here. All of that is hollow. The muskrats are coming and going through. Probably. I have to really pay attention to where I put my feet. See how they're clipping the grass down through here? See how thin that is? Grass is nice and thick on the sides. There'll be a run right in here somewhere. In that mucky water. Hey folks, brought you guys to Suburbia. So it's gonna be super awesome and fun. Uh, we're gonna do a muskrat trapping project at this pond. Uh, brought you here. Problem areas are real simple. Uh, the muskrats are creating bank dens along the side, right in here. And then real importantly, they're creating bank dens on this side here. And uh, if we don't get that solved here real quick, uh, the problem is uh, the pond will leak. Somebody could get hurt and uh, we can't have that. So that's why we're here, gonna trap some muskrats for these nice people back in this cul-de-sac area. It's uh, this is what we, what I call a, a retention pond or an ornamental pond more or less. So uh, here we go. This is going to be the trapping on this, and uh, there's a little bit of a backstory. So let's uh, here's the backstory. Okay, guys. So here's kind of the backstory with this pond. Uh, this uh, I did this pond probably ten years ago, and it had a real heavy infestation real real bad uh we got it done no issues at all i think i took about a dozen to 15 muskrats out of this pond uh had some drama the second time i did this but after the first time i did recommend that they filled in all these holes and 10 years later they didn't listen to my recommendations still have muskrats they come in from a different area they migrate in it's real dry this year and uh, that's one of the problems that i can't fix they're gonna have to be able to do the uh the repair afterwards so uh but anyways here's the backstory on this pond the second time i, I got called out to, to remove two three muskrats uh i had an issue with uh my traps i showed up one day and all my traps were on the bank right here and uh i was like what is going on in my state i have a contract i have a maintenance agreement uh, to trap muskrats out of season uh, that's what i do i always get a hold of my conservation department let them know i'm here there's going to be a presence of me here as a trapper in this area usually as trappers you like to go in secretly quietly let very few people know that you're here uh with these nice houses in this area there's people walking on this walking path right behind me uh, there's people that fish here uh it's a public area so uh I tried to be secretly, but somebody saw my traps and they decided they didn't want me here. They pulled all my traps. Uh, one of the nice homeowners here said they saw it all. It was the lawn mowing guy. Didn't like, didn't like seeing my traps. So he was an ante, more or less. The problem that I had with that is that we got all these other people involved and I had people cussing me out. I just decided, you know, why am I doing this? end of that story was i got a hold of the conservation department told them what was going on they backed me up the guy that pulled my traps was actually it's illegal to tamper with somebody else's traps uh the citation from what i understand wasn't issued should have been and i didn't press any charges uh the board we were dealing with these people usually have a board they were backing me they're behind me i did everything that i should have done right uh no issues at all i was using colony trap colony traps and one tens everything was in the water the way it should be uh it was just a lot of drama so that's kind of the backstory on this i'm really hesitant on being back here because some of these homeowners that didn't want me here before are still here and i'm hoping i don't get any drama 
so <laughs> I just want to be able to do my job and uh, get out of here and a lot of people don't understand there's a balance to nature if we didn't take care of this pond and manage this correctly uh, this pond wouldn't exist because it would it would leak from these burrowing dens uh, somebody could get hurt real bad um, there's a lot of a lot of not good things that could happen out of all of that so um, I'm here today and that was the backstory and let's go set some traps and so here's more of that damage you can see where the the rats are coming and going I've been told there's just one to three rats here but from the looks of this it's really pretty extensive I just saw a muskrat come out and he was feeding on the grass clippings and then he went back in his hole just now which is good it tells me you know there's muskrats here and i know that and you can tell by the sun all right so i'm getting ready to set traps before i do anything liability reasons i'm getting one of these nice fancy signs right here <laughs> just basically says uh somebody's trapping and uh don't stick your hand and uh try not to help the muskrats in the cage you get bit right makes sense I'll put that bad boy right there somewhere yeah. all right here's what we're gonna go with i got uh three colony style traps we're gonna start out with that and then i've got a just a smaller cage trap i'm gonna put a little apple on the back with a little lure on the back of it and then i've got one that's basically a double door trap um and that's where we're gonna start so what i usually like to do is uh usually like to put one tins in there but um we're gonna i already told the board this is what we do to start out um the one tens in those runs and in those bank dens are probably going to be the the best and the most effective but dealing with people and the public sometimes they like seeing stuff going out in cages so <laughs> we're gonna try that first um and uh go from there so that's the plan of attack right now i've got a few bank dens uh looks like they're being used and uh we're gonna get those set up and uh all right we're gonna stick one in right here see it the holes i'm already getting stopped people are already asking questions this is probably one of my by far one of my least favorite things to do i really really don't like doing this job it is such a pain in the butt. People want to know what you're doing. They want to know if it's legal, if it's humane. Definitely my least favorite thing to do. Another good run right here. And uh, get it going. Those traps, they sit down in the water like this. They go right in there. And uh, real easy, effective way of doing it. I just put that right in that run. And the doors kind of go down and they can't get back back in so just put it right where that opening is where the run is and hopefully whatever's using that run will be there tomorrow okie dokie i just like beaver trapping i'm gonna take that flag up when i get done there's my hole might have to cut that back a little bit Try to do is get it flush. I'm gonna put that right where that goes, like that. All as well. Set trap number one, that was easy. No problem. And uh, we're good to go right there. 110 right there works really well. We promise you'll catch one at a time. All right, colony trap number one set. Mm, that water's so green. Yuck. <laughs> this one runs a little different. Usually there's a good V right here. Get that in the middle. Mm. 
they must not have been here very long so colony trap number two gonna stick a colony right here and then uh, I've got a cage trap I'm gonna put it over there it's like this green sludgy water a lot of times you can tell how good the run is by how hard the bottom is right next to it it's kind of sideways this is a better run so nasty water so nasty hopefully we'll have something though we'll have to go with old school methods we'll just have to have the feelings hurt here we go so if you get into a run you think well is this going to be it's being used it's not being used the bottom's hard you know it's a good one there's a good v out here in the water where they're coming and going those are good runs too to hit but uh here we go let's keep going what's that are you gonna catch that thing that's digging all the holes gonna try good yeah when i saw the cage i thought that probably was it yeah they're really causing the trouble, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. I looked over there at that house by the white, white picket fence. Yeah, I saw that too. They just, they dug it all the way yep. all the way. They'll actually leak the pond if if they get if they're not taken care of. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yep. They, they're pretty destructive critters. <laughs> so. I don't know why they want to be around all these people. Oh, yeah. Well, they're they're just there's a balance sometimes isn't there <laughs> that's true yep all right Good luck. thank you oh there we go she uh she didn't make any trouble so she's just wondering what we're doing and uh that's part of the job you have to let them know who you are and what you're doing I think I found one good run right here. We're gonna stick that trap right there. It's a double door trap. You can get catch it coming out. Well, got that sucker in there. Nice and chiseled out anyways. <laughs> it's got the double doors as they kind of come through. And uh, there, there's that sucker set. Now I'm gonna lure it up a little bit and put a little lure back here in the backing. Try that. All right, there's the finished product with it all camouflaged, somewhat hidden. <laughs> I'm just about wondering what the odds are. I'll have traps here tomorrow. <laughs> well, last traps, cage trap with an apple in the back. Usually, I like to set these in the back end of the culverts. There's another spot over there that's really pretty good too. Let's try and look at this. See, see if it's worth setting. Alright, I'll take some sod. Oftentimes I'll put it down in the culvert. And uh, go from there. Oh yeah. Yeah, we can't beat that spot. I don't know if you can see that or not. There we go. We'll just put that right in the middle of the culvert there. Coons will come and go. And, uh, hmm. I'm going to have more coons coming through there than I am muskrats, I'm sure. There's a good set location for sure. So, all right, let's figure it out. I think what I'll do instead, there's kind of a little den right here on the side. And, uh, I think for the first day, I'll set it up here and I'll kind of cover it over real good. I want one down in the middle, but I don't have a good enough weight for that, so I have to figure out maybe a different colony for tomorrow, or a different cage trap for tomorrow, but let's put one right here on the edge of the culvert where they're kind of coming and going here anyways, and then that way I could stake it out here and not have to worry about the coons running off with my trap. All right, there it is, bedded. Got it nice and bedded so it won't wobble. 
get it nice and level. Now what I'll do is I'll take this dirt and put it on the bottom of the cage, make it a little more natural. That way when they go across that cage, it just feels natural. So now I just gotta camouflage it. So just throw it in the trap. We'll find some sod and lay it on top of it. Before I do that though, I'm gonna put a little lure I'm using essential oils today on my apple. Hopefully that'll help. All right, folks, so that's how we're gonna start this uh, trapping the suburbia for muskrats. Uh, I always kind of go slow on these um, just because of feelings attached to this. I don't know how many people are watching me right now. Quite a few, uh, two or three people have asked what I'm doing. So a lot of trappers, we don't like a lot of exposure, but when you're doing nuisance control, it's just part of the job. You have to learn how to talk to people, let them know what you're doing. A little bit just to let them know that it's humane it's safe and there's a balance it's got to be taken care of so um, yeah hopefully later on maybe I'll get some one tens in here after I'm here for a little while make it a little more effective but for now I usually like to come in with cages and uh, let just give kind of a presence if that makes sense and uh, it's still semi effective at best <laughs> but uh, it is what it is, so it's part of the joys of trapping in suburbia. You're dealing with a lot of people, and that's more of the job than dealing with the muskrats, unfortunately. So. Well, folks, I hope you guys like that episode, Trapping in Suburbia. Uh, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe. Otherwise, click the thumbs up. I'm Jinx, and have a great day.